a farmer in Norwich, New York, and I see a play going on. Is uh, the federal government regulators for the price of milk? It regulates communications. It regulates the price of gas and oil. It regulates insurance, but it regulates farming low. Uh, an example: insurance. I have a tractor trailer's license, Class C A um, license, in which I have the liability to drive the heaviest piece of most dangerous piece of equipment for the longest time and then I have to sleep. If it was regulated as farming was regulated, I wouldn't have to buy liability insurance for my car then because my license is already maximized on my liability insurance. But I do. Why not? Again, communication systems. Who put the satellites up there that the communication systems use? Our well, tax I don't know did. any of that. <laughs> Our tax dollars did. Hey, but if they're regulated right now, geez. the powers to be of the Roman Empire, when you live in Rome, do as the Romans do, they're, they're telling us we can do business out of India, and at $20 a month, I can have full faxing, full communications of unlimited talk for 20 bucks a month. Why are we paying $100 a month for the use of the satellites and stuff that we paid for, and then farming's regulated to $16 milk when it's $35 a hundred to produce it? And now I'm seeing a stall. I'm seeing a stall to where I've talked to a driver that drives for the gas companies. He was driving for Jim Hitt Hay and Straw. He went down there to get more money. When it gets said and done, he's earning the same money because he has to work out of Pennsylvania now. It's costing him more to live down there. It's costing him more to jump back and forth. He's losing weight. When it gets said and done, his paycheck, even though it's bigger, is the same money to him. He's telling me that now, because of New York State, they're going to Ohio because, number one, there's oil and gas, and it's not just plain gas, it's liquid gas. It's much more valuable. And so now I'm seeing another play to where they're talking about controlling the price of milk again, and they're talking about going to Ohio instead of coming up this way, because as long as they stall us, uh, I'm talking to Ray Wormworth, the top dog at a surge dealership in uh, Morrisville, and he's telling me that a few years ago, and he's trying to retire, by the way, he can't because his son's in the business. They run four rigs. Their gas bill used to be 2000 a month on the four rigs to run around and hit all the farmers. He says, I can't raise my price because the farmers can't pay it. They can't even pay the price now. I'm, I'm on debt all over the place. He says, the price of my gas now is 4000 a month. It comes directly out of my pocket. That's $500 a week that I could be paying some employee, but I can't because the price of gas regulated up again. And so anyhow, as we're seeing the farmers being dying, you stall us out, we're going to die some more. Guess who's going on the land? Not us. That brings, that brings up a really good point, and, and the point is is that a lot of people, that the, the proponents of the bans and moratoriums say that this whole oil and gas industry is a bust, a boom and bust. You know, three or four years, they'll be in here, they're going to be gone, party over, and then you're going to have to deal with all the environmental nightmares. Well, fun, I say. Since 2008, there's been 3,000 wells drilled in Pennsylvania, and not one document case of groundwater contamination to fracking. People say, yeah, but what about the methane migration? Well, there is methane migration, but every time a person moves from New York City and comes up here and drills a well, do you think they triple seal their groundwater well? No, there's methane migration problems whenever there's a, a well drilled. Two, this boom and bust. Do you realize that the amount of gas in upstate New York will probably take 60 years plus just to get the rigs available to drill it? That's longer than I'd be able to. In addition, they're seeing in Pennsylvania that they got this huge wave of initial jobs that were created from the oil and gas industry that still happened. There's still, I have clients in Delaware County that were against natural gas drilling when I first walked down there, and guess what, 95, 98% of the town now works for gas companies in Pennsylvania. Thank you very much, they're making 80 grand a year where they used to make 20. But you know what they're finding in Pennsylvania? That these jobs from the oil and gas were just the first wave <coughs> on the tsunami. Now, because of the cheap, available, natural gas companies that have businesses that are energy dependent now are moving to Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania is a lot cheaper for them to operate in because the energy is so cheap. So now they're seeing another wave of jobs. Now I realize a lot of people in this room, you know, yeah, have their jobs. Hey, we gotta stick to the law here. This is political propaganda, and we didn't all come here to hear that. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we I came here to hear about the law. You're advising the town board on the law. 
I have some legal Well, questions. I mean, the people are asking me questions, but you're at more than welcome to jump questions. in. I'm so just ask, answering questions. So I got a question for you. Sure. So you have a dog in this fight, as it were, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm like everybody else. I need to support my... Well, daughter. in the sense that, unlike me, your work depends on the natural gas industry. If the whole thing were to dry up and blow away, the landowner representation business goes away too, right? Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, okay. I'd, I'd probably go to Ohio hang or Pennsylvania. So you got the, <laughs> town, the town board is trying to figure out what to do in this incredibly complicated political situation, legal situation, scientific situation, right. and they're getting all kinds of advice from all sides. Right. A lot of mixed messages. Right. Right. So one of the things that we heard a presentation from Mr. Slotchy, and one of the things, he said a number of things that were very interesting. One of the things he said was be very, very careful of somebody who makes the identical argument that you make here tonight, that you should, you, the best thing you can do is to wait. Because if you wait, you're going to get totally clobbered by a bunch of very well prepared, very, very rich gas companies. That you have this very narrow moment in time to get a flag in the ground, assert your rights, or else you lose them forever after. So, you know, as the town board, who do you believe? Now, one of the things that Mr. Slotchy said was that every neutral lawyer that he knows of in the state has come down. This is all the people who don't have the dog in the fight have come down on the other side and said... That's, a, that's insane. I mean, how can you make a statement like that? Well, what he actually said was no single neutral lawyer that he knows of has come out in opposition to the interpretation. So I, my lawyer, question for you is, do <laughs> you know... <laughs> do you know any neutral lawyers who would support what we, having heard both you and David Slotchy, would think is a fair... I mean... Yeah, I mean, I talked to... I, I, I worked in... in uh, large litigation firms in Chicago for nine years. Okay, so he's saying, All of them, they, you know, they get natural gas. They heat their homes out there and pay $250 a month on natural gas. They see the benefit of it. You know, okay, that's people... Political. I want to talk we're legal. Not we're not doing politics here. We're doing legal stuff. You're so, the association... Well, what, are, what are you talking about? That David Slotsky says that he has not run into anybody that is a neutral lawyer, in his opinion. You don't think this is politics? Where's his money come from? Park Foundation. Park Foundation. Yeah, he's getting paid is, by uh, the Park Foundation, Foundation that supports all sorts of environmental. Uh, I just you know, want to save the whales all the way down. Can we just have one conversation here? We'll stick to the point. So my question is: the Association of Towns has said that towns have the right to home rule in their legal opinion, which goes against most of what you said here tonight. Right. The some of the biggest law firms in New York State, including, yeah, I know, you're rolling your eyes. Okay, so you well, know that's already that's an insane statement itself. I mean, come on. Well, and then on the top of that, you've got two legal decisions already in the court system supporting the right of towns to take legal action on this matter. And I'm just wondering. I'm just saying that from my, I agree, all that information. But I, I've worked in litigation for a long time. That, that's not going to stop anything. You know, the fact that Dave, Mr. Slotchke, Attorney Slotchke, has never run into, that, that's not going to hold much weight in front of a court. It doesn't sway a lot. Of, the, it's not going to have a, 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 any impact on how He's this is going to He's not saying it out. is. All I'm saying is there's two sides of this story. You can agree with Mr. Slotchke. Slotchke. You can agree with them and then do what you have to do. I'm just saying that it's not that clear cut. That's all I mean. No, that's I, my only point. But I've already go spoken. Yeah. Yeah, let me go. Yeah. All right, uh, you, you, you can go. Then you can go next. I had my hand up, man. No. Um, I, I have a confused on many things. I appreciate you coming here tonight and, and uh, addressing the folks. But my, my confusion comes in with the board. Um, I'm bringing in a, a transient attorney. And I know that's a harsh word, but he's been here less than a year, and, and he has no background in this whatsoever. Who doesn't? Slotsky. Okay. Okay, sorry, David Slots. Slots. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. You probably yeah. He calls it Slotsky. You guys call me Don Zangle. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm okay, Ed well, Zangle. Hey, that might There's be too much to you, but this is a, a serious <laughs> question, man. Okay? He's a transient lawyer that's coming into your town, and that started all this heated debate. He has no background prior to a year ago. He's got known ties 
directly to the Park Foundation, who's funding them pro bono, and they, they have direct ties to the anti-gas. How is it an attorney like this comes into a town and, and takes control? You have, you for one thing, you have the, 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 the um, Council on uh, Environmental Defense Council mixed up with the uh, Council of the... No, 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 this is the yeah. Environmental Defense Council. He's the... And you have Ed Zangel out here trying to make a living he's, and supporting he's, his kids that work no, for Leandro. Listen, he's, he's the uh, executive oh, director, okay? He's a senior attorney. This is a big firm. It's him and his wife. Yeah, but you, you have them mixed up with the Community Environmental Legal Defense Foundation. No, no, I do not. No, no, they're, they're both funded by part. Bottom line is, I don't understand. Yeah. Excuse me. To yeah. grow up this piece. I'm not looking to start an argument here. What I'm saying is... Let him finish. What I'm saying is a town wouldn't buy plastic snow plows from a transient coming through. So why in the hell would they go with an attorney that has nothing behind him except for he just popped on the scene a year ago? I don't know how towns are doing this.